Hello, my fellow car modelers, and how are you doing today? I am sure that you all have noticed that uh, over the past few weeks, there was a particular series that I had been working on over the past couple of years, an adventure in building a model car, where we were building the Monogram 66 Malibu Flip Nose. If you are watching this, obviously, I have returned the series, and each episode is now going to have this little foreword in it explaining why it was gone and why I'm doing the series and I'm going to bring it back. The reason why is that I don't think many of you understood why I was doing that series and what the purpose of this channel is. When I started this channel, I did not want to be like all the others, not saying that they're bad. I wanted to do something different. I was not going to be a build channel. I will do builds, but I'm not going to be a build channel. I wanted to be a model car hobby information channel and tip channel. So the whole idea, as was stated in the very first episode of an adventure of building a model car, was the reason behind the series was to just have a kit that I would work on through time to use as doing tips. So if you look at the episodes, they're not so much about building that particular model. It's about showing you tips in building a model car, my way of building a model car. It will not be something that I work on all the time. I will do other episodes on other subjects and I will build other models. I am not continually working on this 66 Malibu. This brought some criticism and misunderstandings where I would literally have people so enraged that I wasn't constantly working on it and wanting the rest of this series to continue on that they would threaten to write the channel off and unsubscribe. Well, I'm going to tell you this. That's not a threat that's going to shake me up. If you want to unsubscribe, by all means do. I'm going to continue on. That is why I pulled the series. I'm bringing it back for all of you. It is going to continue on and I will work on episodes as I see fit. Could take a couple of years before it's all done. And when it's all done, you're going to have a nice whole play set to watch from beginning to end. But if you're following it and anticipating the next episode and you're trying to build the same car along with me, I, I'm sorry. That's not what its intentions were. I'm not going to do it all the time. I want to do it in my time as I see fit. I have other things I want to do. Please respect that. It's not about the build of this particular car. It is about the tips and information that I'm giving you. That was my intention. Now you know. Let's continue on and let's enjoy an adventure in building a model car. Hope you enjoy it. Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? So we're going to get back into an adventure in building a model car with the 66 Malibu. On this episode, we are going to deal with the transmission. Well, Luke, it's just a transmission. Paint it silver. Be done with it. Why should it take a whole episode? Why should it take a whole episode? Take a whole episode, whole episode. That's not how I deal with things. This is my adventure you're following, so you're going to do it my way. But what I really do is I feel like taking each individual part, I want to make it as realistic and interesting as possible. And I'm going to show you how to take something so simple as just the transmission with a little bit of paint tricks with Tester's Metalizer's paints to make it look like a transmission, not just a simple piece underneath your model car that say, yeah, okay, that that's where the transmission goes. Who cares? <sighs> it's boring. We're going to make it neat and fun. Neat and fun. Let's show you how I do it. I know you're going to learn something pretty cool. It's pretty easy, pretty cheap and you're all going to enjoy it, so let's check it out. So here we are with the transmission. This kit has produced what I think is one of the best looking four-speed transmission. It depicts a Borg Warner T10, which is personally one of my favorite transmissions to use in a lot of builds, especially like I, I was always a Bill Jenkins Grumpy's Toy fan. I built a few of those kits and I liked using this transmission because this was the transmission that Bill used in all of his super stock and pro stock Grumpy's toys. 
of the early days before they went to the Lanco when he was running the Vega. So this here is just a beautiful transmission along with the bell housing too that is really a nice depiction of an aftermarket I say a Lakewood bell housing which is really perfect for the times completes a very very good looking transmission extremely good looking four speed transmission what we're going to do is pretty this baby up and paint it up kind of an unconventional way but it's a way I always like to and I think the results are pretty impressive and when I tell you that I'm gonna hand paint this yeah. There's a lot of gas. I hear you guys gasping. Hand painting? No. I'm going to show you how to hand paint with airbrush only testers, model master, metalizers. I love these paints and I've hand brushed them for years since they came out. I don't even think I've ever airbrushed them. I've always hand brushed them. They work out really well. So we're going to get on this one right now. One thing that I've always felt about doing these transmission cases is I kind of go against my rule like how I was about that oil pan on the engine this split is actually going to be a part of our detail because if you ever look at a real one these were cast steel cast iron sorry if anybody know put it in the comments below they were a two-part mold and you have two sections you have the main body here and you have the tail shaft and i'm going to show you a really neat thing to do and what i do when i paint all the parts and then you got the cover right here where the shifting linkage is and i'm going to show you how to contrast all that stuff to make this a really good looking transmission reason why i go through all this trouble where some people will just shoot it a silver color and be done and call call it done i've always liked to take each individual part of a model and make it its own model with hand painting tricks that i'm going to show you in different shades really brings out the transmission when you lift up the car and you see it. It, it it looks more than just a silver blob under there again one thing monogram did with this they did such a beautiful job replicating a borg warner t10 transmission back to the line so i'm just going to calm it down with my little scraping trick it doesn't need to go away. It just needs to be calmed down a little bit. And I can just do it with this. Just get in there and dig, scrape, whatever. Just real quick. Again, I'm not going to worry about the top side because this isn't going to be seen. So why bother? It's the bottom side. That's the important part. And just get this lightly scraped just so the seam isn't so prominent and look like it's actually two halves for a model part it's more like the seam from where the mold split when they were casting it whatever they cast it in magnesium i don't know i'm not a metallurgist off the top of my head i, I, I can't remember what these were cast in i'm sure one of you will tell me it's not that important but i'd like to know so let me know there it is i'm just got it a little cleaned up and hit it a little with this with my sanding foam mainly right here on the main part of the body that's where it's really going to be noticeable again i don't want to lose it i just want it calmed down a bit and then i'm going to hit it with a little bit of 15 grit sandpaper because i like to use sandpaper get the sandpaper kind of into a small shape for a small area and just kind of hit it a little i hope you can see that just smack it down a little Sorry if my fingers are in the way. I'm kind of a jerk like that. I want to build my model. Oh. So sand to sand. This just kind of gets rid of the heavier grit from the and the scraping that I did. And that should be just fine. Now, do I primer or do I not primer? You know, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to not primer. Because, actually, for using metalizers... Black is an extremely good base for using metalizers. If you ever see, on, well, I know some of you have worked with all clad and they say you shoot gloss black first. And also same with a lot of these newer chrome paints coming out. It gives you the effect a lot better. If you ever looked on the back of a mirror, how the whole back of the mirror is kind of like got a black finish on the back that helps the reflective nature of a mirror. Works the same with uh, any types of metalized type paints. They're all kind of a silver base, so the black really works well, and it helps you with the shading. We've got the transmission mounted on a little toothpick, so it's easy to work with and paint, and not get any paint on my fingers, hopefully. And I pulled out four different 
shades of a sh silverish type of metalizer I want to go with because again I'm going to paint each section a little bit different shade I don't yet know what direction I want to go with but um, so I went ahead and got four different colors I don't know if I'm going to use them all but we're going to start with this is a dark anodonic gray and it's a buffing and you have well first of all the thing about metalizers is you have buffing and non-buffing and I have showed this in the episode with the Volvo exhaust that I used buffing metalizers and they were um, you know you can buff them with like just a piece of tissue paper and it really shines up and looks like metal and I have the titanium here it's a little bit of a darker it is a buffing and my only non-buffing one I pulled out was gunmetal and gunmetal I think I can use for like little accents and stuff I don't know exactly yet what I want to go but one thing I did is I pulled up off the internet a nice picture I got on my phone here that I will use to kind of reference and get my ideas of what shades of silver I want to go with you can see this one how the case and the tail shaft and the plate are all they're all a different degree of silver metal colors and it, it, I, to me, this just gives it more of a realistic look and, and contrasts. And then I kind of do other things with the different shades of silver just to create contrast in raised and lower areas. It's kind of like painting a painting. So I got this off of the side I'm going to be constantly looking at just to get my idea in the direction I want to go with what I want painted. So to start with, I think we'll paint the main body. And I'm going to go with, let's see... What I think I'm liking this dark, I think it's called anodonic, yeah, an an anodonic, let's go, I'm going to go with this dark anodonic gray, I think this stuff is pretty thinned, the, the nice thing about these paints is they're, if you can see it, I don't know, they're very thinned, you can't really tell, very, very thin. It's a very thin paint. I always keep a little bit of metalizer thinner off to the side, which is basically lacquer thinner. To play it safe, I use this, and I will every once in a while add more to it as it evaporates and the paints start to get thicker, because I actually want these paints to be very thin, like, like if you were putting them into an airbrush, and it r works out very well. Because of them being so thin, let's get a little out here, I get a good amount onto my brush. I wish I had a little bit bigger brush, but this is all I got right now. This is an uh, zero. Uh, sometimes I like to use a little bit, little bit bigger. And I just go ahead and I just start brushing it on. And I, I kind of do it almost like a dry brushing technique really fast. I like to keep the brush wet. Just get I get it really on there thick. And then wh why I do that is this is how it makes the brush strokes vanish. It's a little bit different painting than if you were to brush paint with just like your regular brushes where you can't, you don't really want it that thin. But look at how quick. I mean, this stuff is already drying. And the thing is, you want to get it on there as quick as possible because when the stuff starts to set up and dry, if you put some more on there, then you'll start like wiping the original off and that gets to be a bit of a pain. So you want to get an area covered pretty heavy. This is the top. I'm not too worried about it, but I'm still going to do it. I'm even going to paint on this side too because you never know what's going to show. And here we go. We're going to get the bottom where I kind of got rid of some of the parting line or the, the half split line. And we're just going to go across like that. Just get it all. Just It's more about coverage. And I do it pretty quick. There's a little area right there. Pretty wet and pretty quick. I'm kind of, because this is the lighter color, and I always want to start with the lighter color. I'm not worried about going over onto the tail shaft that I'm going to paint darker a little bit later. And again, we're all like that. So I'm just getting, getting around that plate, because that plate's going to get painted a different color. And there we go. Look, if you can see, there. There's that split line right there, just subtle. And it has that more like came out of the mold, the cast look. Uh, that's what I was going for. But you see as this stuff sets up. And you know, another thing about it is if you ever look at a cast aluminum part like this or cast metal part, even a bit of the streaking that you get from the brushing, you keep it in the same direction, it gives it that texture of a cast metal part. 
it looks like we got a really good amount of coverage. There's a couple of spots here. But I think this was a good color to go with. And, and that's the top though. That's, it. that's really more the tail shaft, so I, I guess I don't need to do that. That is the real important part right there, because that's what you're going to see from the underneath. So now I think I want to go with a darker for the... I got two darker ones. This is very. This is the darkest one. That's the gunmetal, and this is the titanium. It's not as dark. So I think I'm going to go with the titanium for the tail shaft, and I'm going to use the gunmetal for the side plate where the shifting mechanisms are. We'll pop this one open, and I hope it's in good shape. Oh yeah, it is. It's it actually. I'm going to put a little bit thinner into this one. I just put a little bit into the cup, and I'm just going to drop it in there. It's not a science, but again, like I said, the thinner the better with these metalizers. They really work well, and they eat and they self-level and even out and will shake, shake. shake. Alrighty. Oh yeah, that's looking awesome. And again, like we did with the body, we're going to get it pretty wet and get it all on there. Uh, I don't know if it's coming up well on the camera because it, we're painting a black portion and it probably looks more like you're painting it black but it is it's very very metallic looking like a dark metallic color I want to get really careful here this is where it takes a bit of a steady hand because now that's where the split is I don't want to go around to the case and this is where like it shows how it's all bolted together there and here's the top I don't care so much about just want to get some good coverage on the top not worried about it and we'll get all that covered real fast all a good again it's all nice and wet and before it dries up I want to get another coat on here I'm dabbing it on there pretty heavy because that's a that's a little thing you can do with these metalizers when they're really thin is like dab a glob on there and it'll almost like self level across the part but again we got this area here that needs to be done with a kind of a steady hand but I think we got our look. That's starting to dry. You can see the contrast between the two silvers. But it looks like a nice, good looking cast metal, cast alloy part. Do a little bit more right there. And that's pretty much that. So now we're going into the gun metal to do that side plate. My gun metal here, it's kind of old and it's looking a little bit thicker than the rest of them. It's not real thinned, but I don't think I'm going to worry about it so much because this is a little more of just a side detail. And we'll just go ahead and get this painted up. Let's get some more on the brush. This is where you got to have a steady hand and catch the edge so right so that we don't go over onto the body. And then it'll look like a mess. And again, this is probably looking more like I'm just painting it black, but it is. It's 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 still very metal looking. Hence that they call them metalizers. Again, I am just a huge fan of metalizers paints. All the different metalizing type paints that have come out over the years. I use it in quite an unconventional way, like I'm showing you here. And to me, I get my favorite results. It works for me so I'm not moving on to anything else. I've tried other like all clads I've messed around with. And you can do this with all clads actually and they work out pretty well. But it's just all the neat different types of metals and I have so many other things I'm going to show you some cool stuff you can do with metalizers with a paintbrush that is absolutely mind-blowing. Like carburetors. Wait till I get to the carburetors. So there we go. We've got it. It's pretty dry. That's the top. Here's the part. That's the look that we're looking for right there. This is the important spot that we want to have a look right underneath that car. That's what we'll be seeing. And I think we got the look we're going for. Let's see that in the light. Now I could polish that up a bit. I don't really want it to have that shiny sheet metal look. 
I want it to be flat like this because these were like a cast alloy and cast metals. So I think that gives me the look I want. I'm not going to buff them and I'm pretty pleased with it. I could go in there I'm thinking maybe take a little bit of brass and maybe we'll hit those bolt heads around there just to give it a little look. Lots of times I'll take brass. Brass it's a non buffing and this is this is an awesome color to use for bolt heads and stuff. I just like to sometimes bring a little bit of brass or gold into this into the uh, equation because what it ends up doing is just creating a little bit of color and a little bit of contrasting and a little change. This is my technique and it's going to be tough to get on film and I'm just taking a little bit of the gold that's in the cap here or the, the brass I should say and I get a nice testers I like testers brushes this is a 3-0 I'm using here and I try to go in at an angle and just lightly go across the top just lightly touch you see how that goes you goes dead on that's when you start getting stuff that goes into your into the part down below of where the area you want painted just a little touch a little touch a little touch and like I am barely going down on it can you see that how that turned out yeah I messed up a little on that one but that's up towards the top so I'm not going to worry about it but I got these bottom ones pretty good and it just gives it a little bit more show and again you just add an angle like that just a little quick touch very lightly try to be as light as you possibly can it almost feels like you're not touching it and when that happens you get the right thing it'll just lightly graze across the raised portion there's your transmission your Borg Warner T10 transmission all set and ready to be loaded into the car so we'll set that off the side fresh from the transmission shop we're all happy I'm happy you're happy I'm glad you're happy I'm glad you're learning something. Are you learning something? Good. Let me know in the comments below if you're learning something. And if you're not learning anything, or you think I'm some kind of jerk, thinks I know everything and I don't, say it down there, and we'll ignore you. Don't you worry about that. Put your caps and tighten your caps on everything. Because you don't want to come back to your glue and your paints, and they're dried out, and then you got to go buy more, because spending money sucks. I know. I have a little bit of money. Sometimes I spend it, and I always think it sucks. And that's it. It's that simple. Look at how cool that turned out. That was pretty neat, huh? So just get yourself some metalizer paint, a nice paintbrush, and go to it. It's simple as that. And you can come out with something pretty neat like that. I think it just adds so much to your model. It'll just make a little more realism in them like that. It's really simple. And it's like I said earlier, you know, I like to take each individual part of a model and think of it as a model of itself. That was a model of a Borg Warner T5 transmission. And that's how I treated it. If you want to get into heavy detail putting in the linkage detail on I've done that too before this model we're trying to keep it simple on the detail side but there's so much enhancement you can do on a model with just paint tricks hand painting tricks and that to me is a big part of a detailed model is what you do with paint so start looking at your little hand paints as a really good tool in creating an excellent looking model now, as I know, there's a lot of guys that they don't even touch the hand paints anymore and they do everything spray. And as you can see, if you do it right, hand painting can really help that model out a lot. So in the next episode, I'm going to get a big brush. I'm going to get a big amount of paint. I'm going to hand brush the entire body and we're going to have a really cool looking car. That was a joke. So thanks a bunch for clicking on my video. If you like this video, like it, subscribe, hit the bell for the notifications, if you will. And just keep on making the comments. I read every single one. I might not be able to answer them all. It's starting to get to be a lot. And I'm really busy trying to get this content out. As you can see, I'm sorry. I haven't been putting out the videos as much as I used to. It's just with my regular job. That regular job has been taking a lot of time from me. And I try to fit in all my little extra time I got into making these videos. And I do take some time. We're going to have another Lucas Kits coming out. And as you saw in the last vlog with Andy, we've got that challenge going on. I'm going to start making other videos on that 
check it out. You guys are going to like what I do with this tank. Oh, wow, this is a model car channel. What are you doing, doing building tanks? Just watch. It's fun. It's all about fun. And I'm just doing something with my friend. Check it out, but it's not going to interrupt this series. And it's not going to interrupt things about model cars. Don't you worry. We're just having fun. And go check out on Andy's channel. You know, he's got a few car videos on there. If you haven't checked out Andy, he builds everything. And I'll tell you what, he's turning into a heck of a car model and really starting to like it. We just build models. That's what it's all about. We're having fun. So check out that. Check out the live streams over on his video channel. I always have a link to his channel at the end of my videos. Click on that. Click on anything else that's over there. We'll see you in the next video. So in the next episode, I'm going to get a big brush get a big amount of paint so on the next episode I'm gonna get a big brush and I'm gonna get a big amount of oh, shit. And it seems like well hmm I've always, I've always, as I said, I like to take each interval, as I, I just think it looks better, you know, I just think it adds so much, okay, this is the one.